So this battery, which is almost the same size as a 100 amp hour battery, has 300 amp hours. And recently I made a video about how most of these mini batteries aren't very small and you have to pay more money for them and it's really not worth buying them. But this thing is ridiculous. Look how small this is for the capacity. For example, this is the EnjoyBot 150 amp hour and they're almost the same size but this one has double the capacity. Now the EcoWorthy was the only one that I could find that could compete with the size and the price. This one actually costs less than the watt cycle, but it's still quite a bit bigger, especially when it comes to the width. Now the EcoWorthy is on sale. Usually this one's actually cheaper. Now some months back, we actually reviewed another battery with the same size case and it had 200 amp hours. So even this is a massive improvement. But none of these are as small as this thing. For having 300 amp hours, the volumetric density is incredible. So the current price on their website is $529. And if we divide that by three, it's $176 per 100 amp hours. Now let's compare it to the price of a server rack battery. So if we take 176 and we multiply it by four, it comes out to $704 for five kilowatt hours. If you were to buy an EG4 server rack battery, the cheapest one they have is $1,200. So this thing is $500 cheaper than the cheapest server rack battery, which is insane. Now for a long time, the EG4 was the cheapest server rack battery, but not anymore. There's actually others like the Vatier. And this one is $936 for five kilowatt hours. So still, this thing is cheaper. And I'm gonna review this. I'm gonna actually get these today. I have four of these coming, so I can't wait to review this thing. But anyways, this thing is super cheap. It's crazy how cheap these have actually become. So today we're gonna actually review it. We're gonna rip it apart. I already did a capacity test and it pulled 305 amp hours, which is not the best. It should be a little bit higher. We might need to balance these cells to get a really good first cycle capacity. Typically a really good 100 amp hour will pull 106 amp hours. And then the cheaper ones pull about 101 to 103. So for this capacity, it should have pulled 309 to 316. So it technically still passed, but I wish it did better. It might need to be balanced. That's a common problem with these cheaper batteries. Next, a lot of people complained when this thing first came out because the lid was not glued on properly. When I first learned about this, I was super mad because I recommended their smaller battery, but it seemed like their larger battery had that issue. Now, if that did happen to you, Watt Cycle would give you a whole nother battery for free and let you keep this one if you were to glue it yourself. Also, if you didn't like that, you could get a free battery and a refund. So I thought that was pretty fair. It was only on one batch of batteries and they said that it should be good from now on. Now this battery just finished the capacity test last night. So let's charge it as fast as we can and see if it can handle it. It says in the manual that it can handle 200 amps. And now we're charging with 150 amps. So we'll come back in two hours when this thing is fully charged. All right, there we go. That's the best I can do. That's all my 12 volt chargers. And it seems to be holding up. We haven't had a disconnect yet. Might be small, but it's still pretty heavy. Now the first thing we're gonna test is the overcurrent protection. On budget batteries, a lot of time it doesn't work. Now Watt Cycle's smaller battery, it does work. So hopefully this one works as well. So first we'll press record and all of these resistors are switched to on and then we'll turn on the main switch. 580, holy cow, that's a lot of current. And it is not tripping. And that's two minutes and it did not trip. So it does not work. Uh-oh, and this thing feels like a fire. It is giving off tons of heat. So it says overcurrent discharge protection. Is it 850 amps plus or minus 100? That is ridiculous. <laughs> but the smaller one is at 300. So I trip it every time with this resistor bank, but not with this battery. Now 850 amps, that's more than what these cables can handle. So even with a dead short, it could cause a fire. And this is very common with these 12 volt batteries. Get a dead short so the Seacon had the same problem. So what I recommend is if you do buy these budget batteries, put a fuse on every single one. Let's say you buy three of these batteries and you put them into parallel. That's 2,550 amps. That is a lot of current. 
So yeah, please add a fuse to these budget batteries. That is scary. And I'm gonna tell them that they need to change that. This thing is rated for 200 amps continuous discharge. So the overcurrent protection should be maybe 250, not 850. That's ridiculous. I was so excited because the smaller ones did so well, but not this one. But it did work as advertised, so they didn't lie. But yeah, that should be set to something different. And I'm surprised we didn't get a high temperature disconnect because I ran it for two minutes minutes at that current. Typically the BMS will shut down anyways, but it did not. So let's open it up and see what's going on. I have to be very careful because those cells go up pretty high. Someone's hair is in here. It's kind of small though, so it was a boy, not a girl. Usually we find girls' hair in these batteries. Right, so now we're charging with 10 amps. And here's the temperature sensor. Shove it in there for a little bit. Oh, it works. That worked quickly. Let's heat it up. Yeah, that was great. That's how fast they're supposed to work. All right, let's tear this apart and see what type of cells they're using. Because those capacity test results have me worried. Guess what? These are 280 amp hour cells. That's why the capacity test results were lower. And it says right there, 896 watt hours. So 896 times four, 3,584. But the case says 3,840. That is wrong. Just because it tests high on the first couple cycles does not mean you're allowed to label it like this. And at the voltage nominal of these cells, these are 280 amp hour cells, so this should be called 280 amp hours like the other companies. The moment I saw those capacity test results, I thought they were 280 amp hour cells. But I just wanted to make sure because some of them are not that balanced and all the other reasons. But no, they are mislabeling these batteries. Some guys will even make an argument saying, oh, it's a 12 volt. So we can say 300 amp hours because at that voltage, we pull 300 amp hours. But that's not true either because this is a 12.8 voltage nominal battery pack. So yeah, this needs to change and this needs to change. I'm very disappointed. And that means the Eco Worthy when it's not on sale has the same price and capacity as this thing. But that battery is larger and I actually like the build quality better on the watt cycle with these steel cell holders. Also the BMS supply conductors are bolted down and all of their models have low temp charging protection. But the overcurrent protection needs to be reprogrammed. 850 amps is excessively high. Now, even though it passed my initial capacity test, it's not gonna be pulling 300 amp hours after the first 100 cycles. It's only for the first few cycles that you're gonna pull 300 amp hours. And there's lots of companies that have done this in the past, but I haven't had anyone do it recently. Now for a 280 amp hour cell, it's still a fantastic deal, but you need to put a fuse on there. Hopefully they can fix that issue and all the other things I complained about. And in a couple months, we'll have a new updated version. That would be really nice. And you'll know if it's an updated version because it will have the proper capacity on the front. So hopefully that happens soon. Um, thank you so much for watching and I hope you liked the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.